good morning and a very warm welcome to our service today at St Michael's and All Angels Hinton Admiral for this Harvest Festival service for Bransgore, Thornhill and Hinton Admiral. The Bible says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own do we give you. Our Harvest Festival service begins to date with our first hymn, Come Ye Thankful People Come. Come from God and of his own do we give him. God is, of course, generous uh, to us, and yet we often take his generosity to us uh, for granted. We live in God's world as though we are God's, and we're the only ones who matter that we deserve to have every good and perfect thing. In fact, that we even earn those things and uh, that they are ours. But of course, everything comes from God. Have a moment of quiet to call to mind the things for which we seek God's forgiveness this morning. Perhaps you'd like to join with me with the words on the screen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the College Prayer for the 17th Sunday after Trinity. Lord, we pray thee that thy grace may always prevent and follow us, and make us continually to be given to all good works, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> well, in just a moment we're going to have a reading uh, from the Bible, and then a talk from, from me and a hymn, uh, followed by a time of prayer led for us today by Jenny. But first of all, uh, we're going to sing, Behold Our God Seated on His Throne. Psalm 65 Praise awaits you, our God, in Zion. To you our vows will be filled. You who answer prayer, to you all people will come. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those who you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds, God our Saviour, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, who forms the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders, where the morning fades, with where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and water it, you enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water, 
to provide the people with corn, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The, me- the hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with corn. They shout for joy and sing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wonder, what is the most beautiful thing that you've seen this year? Uh, Something so stunning it just took your breath away. It's possible that this year isn't a year where you've seen a lot of beautiful things. But perhaps if you have seen something really splendid, the chances are it was something you saw uh, outside. A great view, uh, maybe the sea. Perhaps something uh, you saw early in the morning if you were able to go out for a walk. Something like that. For, for me, I, I've actually got loads of things to choose from. Uh, but possibly the most beautiful thing uh, I saw uh, this year was the view from the top of a place called Great Mel Fell in the Lake District. We went there on, on, on holiday, uh, camping right in the top end of the Lake District near um, near Pen, Penrith and Blen Cathra uh, Mountain, if, if you know, know it at all. And um, there is what, by Lake District standards, is a very tiny hill, uh, Great Mel Fell. And, uh, but by kind of Hampshire standards, it's huge. It's way bigger than anything in the south of England. And um, I set myself the challenge to uh, run up this hill uh, early in the morning. And, uh, and I got out of bed, got out of the tent. It was quite hard work to do that in, in the first place. And as I looked out, it was cloudy absolutely everywhere you couldn't see anything and you definitely couldn't see the top of Great Mel Fell which was just about three miles away uh, from the campsite and I almost didn't do the run I ran towards the bottom of it thinking well am I really going to do this it's not a great idea to run up a um, a big hill which you've never been up before if you can't actually see anything and it's all, all cloudy uh, halfway up uh, the hill I broke through the clouds and the view was spectacular by the time I got uh, to the summit I was in a place where which I will never forget maybe for the rest of of my life there I was high above the clouds and the only other thing above the clouds were the tops of the mountains that were even bigger than the one I was standing on it was absolutely uh, spectacular it was a moment of complete uh, wonder complete uh, joy it was so, uh, so breathtaking. I hope I'll never forget it. What is the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? And the most beautiful thing that you've seen uh, this year, I wonder. And why is it that when we see something beautiful uh, in nature, we are so astounded uh, by it? Why is it that when somebody asks us what the most beautiful thing is that we've ever seen, we automatically think of things that we've seen uh, outdoors? What is it about nature that makes us feel uh, like that? Well, our reading today gives us the answer to that. Why are we so in love uh, with nature? Well, nature sings a song of the creator. Nature tells us the way that the world really uh, is. But the world around us tells us something that is profoundly true, something we often close our eyes to. Uh, this is what Psalm 65 has to say about it. It's our special harvest uh, reading today. It says uh, says this, uh, and it's a hymn of praise to God. It says, The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonder, where morning f- dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. The whole earth is filled uh, with awe. It's stunned by the brilliance of God, and it sings songs of joy to him day after day. Uh, Praise the Lord is the song of of the mountains, the song of the birds, the song of the streams as it runs uh, through the hills. Praise the Lord, and it's the song of harvest as well. God is good, nature wants to tell us goes on to say this, you crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow, the hills are clothed with 
gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with corn. They shout for joy and sing. If the earth could speak, if the fields could sing a song that we would understand, they would say, God is great. God is good. God is loving. God is kind. That is the message of creation. Have you heard that message? If you haven't heard it, get out there and hear it. That is the message of harvest. God is good to us. Each year he provides what we what we need more than enough. God is good. Well, perhaps this year you found it ever so hard to see that that is, uh, that is true. Maybe you haven't been able to get outside. You haven't been able to see what the world around us uh, looks like. Maybe you haven't been able to see the sea. And of course, the tragedy is that here um, in, in Bransgore and, and Hinton Admiral, we're ever so close to the sea. It's just a couple of miles away. And you haven't been able to see it. And you haven't been able to see the message of God's goodness that creation uh, tells us. Maybe this has been a frightening year uh, for you because of COVID-19. I feel like the horizons of your life have closed in uh, around you. And it's become a, a disappointing and a, and a sad version of what life is normally like. Is that true for you? I wonder. Well, even in the darkest days, God is still good. I wonder now if you've heard of um, quite a new songs of praise uh, presenter called Katie Piper. Now, I confess, I don't watch um, songs of praise. I prefer the, the, the live uh, the live thing of, of, of coming to church. I know that's not an option for uh, for everyone. And um, Katie Piper is a, is a brand new presenter on Songs of Praise. And even before that, she was reasonably uh, famous and famous for actually a very sad uh, reason. Um, uh, Katie Piper uh, was, and I think still is, um, a model in her early 20s. Uh, she was sexually assaulted by somebody she had been in a relationship uh, with soon after. Uh, he arranged for her to be attacked in a, an acid uh, attack, an absolutely unspeakably uh, vicious uh, crime. You know, there are a few things that, that happen in, in the world that it, if I start to think about them, it makes me incredibly angry. And I, this is one of those uh, one of those things. I wonder if that's the same uh, for you. This... Um, uh, Katie has had some 200 operations to have her face returned uh, to normality. She lost her ears and her nose um, uh, in, in the attack and was unable to breathe properly. And you just imagine what it must have felt like being in that incredible pain uh, in hospital. Now, having uh, grown up as an, as an atheist, uh, Katie was rather surprised when uh, the nurse said, uh, said to her, this is not the end. God has great things in store uh, for you. She'd never heard anything like that. And here she was in the hospital bed, suffering in unimaginable ways, hearing that message for the first time. And for the first time in her life, Katie prayed. She called out uh, to the Lord. And she says nothing really miraculous uh, happened. She didn't get a, see a vision or anything uh, like that but she had an incredible sense of peace and an incredible sense that she was deeply loved. Uh, over the years, Katie's life has been uh, reconstructed as her, her face was also reconstructed as well. And she's been able to uh, put some of the pain and hurt uh, of the past uh, behind her. But even in that really dark situation, Katie was able to see that God is loving. God is is good she was able to sing the same song of the trees and the hills and the valleys standing thick with corn that they sing for joy can you see that if you can't see that uh, psalm 65 helps us out a little bit more because the best thing about god isn't just that he's created a splendid place for which in which for us to live god is also 
gracious to us. He's unimaginably loving. It says this, when we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. You know, harvest is a great time to think about issues of, of justice and, and food justice. We've been given uh, so much, haven't we? We can buy an extraordinary array of food products in our supermarkets. And yet we know that there are people going uh, without on our own streets and in many other parts of, of the world. Are we really just in the way that we spend our money and the way we waste uh, the way, way we waste our food. Do we really care enough about people who don't have uh, have enough? With that spectacular ability we've got just to think of ourselves and to close our minds to the needs of, of others is a, is a feature of our human sinfulness. The way in which we live life as though we're the only ones who matter and nobody else, and especially not God, matters. We're overwhelmed by this. That's why people are starving in the world today because of our hard-heartedness, because of our failure to want to do anything about the situation, we are overwhelmed by our sin, and yet God has forgiven our transgressions. Whilst we might deserve condemnation for what we have done, God has provided us safety and rescue in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, who is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. There was no one other good enough, says the old hymn, to pay the price for sin. He only could unlock the gates of heaven and let us in. That's the song of creation. God is good. God is loving. God is kind. Join with creation and sing that song this harvest time. Amen. God. At this harvest time we thank you for all the good things you give us. As we thank you for our food we remember all those who do not have enough for even one proper meal each day. Lord bless all those who suffer because of the greed of others. We pray for the homeless and those who depend on the charity of others. We pray for the work of the local food banks providing food for those in need. Help us to share the harvests of the world more fairly, so everyone can be fed 
and there will be no more starvation. At this harvest time, we thank you for the hard work of all those who grow, protect and prepare our food. For the shopkeepers, the transport delivery drivers, the processors and the farmers. Bless all those, Lord, who do not earn a fair day's pay for their hard work, both at home and in other countries. Help us to want to buy local produce and fairly traded goods wherever we can, so that everyone can work with dignity and there will be no more poverty. At this harvest time, we thank you for the world we see around us, for the flowers, the trees and the animals. Bless all those who care for them, Lord. Help us to protect your creation by being careful about how we use your resources, so that there will be clean water, clean air and plenty of wild birds, mammals and insects to maintain the ecological balance of our countryside. We give thanks for all that is good in your creation and all who bring in the harvest of the sea and the land. We are conscious of so much that we get wrong. We give thanks too for your grace and patience with us. When we fail to look after your world as we should, help us to change so that we too may become a new creation walking in the light of your gospel. At this harvest time, we ask for your blessing on our families, friends and neighbours and on those who are sick. We pray for those whose lives have been gathered into your presence, whose work here is done. Help us to recognise the importance of relations and community and help us become good stewards of all you continue to give us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Source of all life and giver of all good, hear our prayers and grant us all that is in accordance with your will. We ask these prayers in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll draw our prayers together with the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So it's time now for a little bit of church family news. Lots of services that you can come to today. Eight o'clock communion service at St. Mary's in Brandsgore. 9.15 communion service at this church, St. Michael's and All Angels in Hinton. And that's the way it's going to be. Uh, next Sunday we'll have the one service at the same time. And after that, uh, hopefully that's how it'll be. Um, 10.30 service at St. Mary's, hopefully outdoors. Um, see what the weather's like. If not, it'll be inside the church. Again, harvest service. And then four o'clock this afternoon at All Saints Thorny Hill. Next service at All Saints Thorny Hill will be in a month's time, another communion uh, service. And the next eight o'clock service will be in two weeks time. So do come along to uh, one of those for a prayer book service. We're trying to work out how we can get back to a little bit of normality, uh, safely following all the best advice with our Sunday school. Um, we normally have lots and lots of children at, at church. And um, we think the best way for us to learn is in age differentiated groups. Um, so adults together with a, with a sermon and uh, children in their different groups looking at the Bible um, as well. So we're trying to work out how to do that. And uh, hopefully as the winter um, comes on, um, we'll have Sunday school back in some form or another. If you're a regular church person and you've got some clever ideas on how you think we might do this, I'm always welcome uh, for suggestions. No one's an expert. Um, on this. It's new for everyone. So no one's got any real wisdom or special advice to give. Every church is trying to do uh, as best as they can and we are no exception uh, there. Let's sing our final hymn. I suppose it's the one you've all been waiting for. Uh, the Great Harvest Hymn. We plough the fields and scatter.
taught much more to us his children. He gives our daily bread. All good gifts are on us, us and from earth above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all his love. We thank thee then, O oh Father, for all things bright and good. The seed time and the harvest, our life, our health, our food. Accept the gifts we offer for all the love imparts, and what the most desirest, our humble, thankful hearts. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all his love. Well, thank you very much for joining us online today. If you enjoyed the service, um, please do give it a, a like on YouTube, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and uh, we'd love for you to join us again. Let me pray for God's blessing now as we finish. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, get your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.